And now to the Conference on Global Wildlife Trade in South Africa. The second session on Sunday focused on the celebration of World Wildlife Day internationally. The resolution passed was that the CITES Secretariat would manage the themes and celebration of this day. It was first held in 2013 as an ad hoc event. The Secretariat has now suggested that themes will be adopted and will report back on all meetings held with the UN organizations with regards to planning and preparation. Well, crime intelligence, corruption and illicit financial flows remain some of the key challenges in tackling rhino poaching, horn trafficking and transnational criminal networks. That's according to Julian Rademeyer, a senior research fellow with the Global Initiative for Transnational Organized Crime. He addressed the CITES conference today and warned that a thriving trade in weapon rentals is sustaining the illicit supply chain on a global level. Wildlife trafficking is estimated to generate billions of dollars a year. The biggest challenge here for, for law enforcement is that um, these are networks without borders. These are criminal networks that operate easily across international boundaries. They operate easily across multiple legal jurisdictions. Um, they're not bound to the same strictures that law enforcement authorities are bound to. Um, and inevitably, they tend 12 steps ahead of law enforcement. Well, CCTV's Angela Coppola is keeping tabs on the proceedings at CITES 2016. He joins us now live with the latest from Johannesburg. Angela, just talk us through the key highlights uh, from today's sessions at CITES 2016. Well, there were several bilateral meetings that happened between government officials. There were some memorandums of understanding signed around uh, developing cooperation or closer cooperation between countries around South Africa, like Namibia, Botswana. And it was also about the endangered animals, including sharks, rays, the African uh, grey parrot, and the pangolins. The second plenary, as you've mentioned, focused on that wi World Wildlife Day, which is good news because it now formalizes the arrangement and it now can plan ahead properly for the future. As you've just mentioned in your pack uh, the, that bit of a package there, the investigative journalist also unveiled some of his findings around who the kingpins are in this illicit um, trade in rhino horn. He actually goes out and names them, which is probably a first time that those names have been heard in public. They are alleged, so there is some evidence still needed to capture them. Um, there's also news today of a $130 million budget that's been allocated for some 90 projects that uh, COP will be looking after in the next 12 months or so. We saw the launch of the Rhino Conservation Range States Action Plan. And in this instance here, South Africa was calling on donor funding for the continent. That's where countries are going to be developing rhino so that they can live in the wild. And lastly, there's a meeting currently underway about the species conservation in the Southern African development community. And that's quite an important thing. So it's been a really busy day for delegates and it's set to continue well into the night. Mm. Wendy? A busy day indeed. Uh, Angela, of course, we know that the proposal on lifting the ban on trade of ivory uh, appears to be a rather contentious issue at this year's meeting. Any signs of an emerging consensus between uh, the opposing sides? Uh, Lydia, I doubt it. It's very contentious. As you know, Namibia and Zambia or Zimbabwe want to lift that ban on the trade. The argument is that if they legalize ivory trade, they'd allow stockpiles of confiscated ivory to be sold, um, flooding the market with ivory and then reducing the demand and also hopefully to reduce illegal poaching. Uh, the opponents say that this strategy won't work. It's not going to save the species. In any event, the proposals would require support from two-thirds of the 180-odd CITES parties to move it forward. Whether there is a two-thirds uh, consensus view remains to be seen, but it's unlikely. Meanwhile, the International Union on Conservation of Nature says that 100,000 elephants have been killed in the last 10 years. If anything, it's suggested that the gap between these two parties is so far and it's growing. Tomorrow, of course, is the big day when the Conference of the Parties actually meets to talk about elephants. I expect f fireworks at that point, Lindy. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll certainly be looking out for that. Thanks very much, Angela Coppola, live for us there in Johannesburg on the latest uh, on that uh, CITES conference.